Chapter One: A New Life. No, it isn't true. It can't be true. Matt Johnson woke up. It was that nightmare again. The same nightmare every night for six weeks. It was so real. His parents are in the car. They're happy. They're laughing and talking about the summer holidays. Two weeks in Florida, Disney World, Cape Canaveral, the ocean to swim in. A twelve-year-old kid's dream. Suddenly, the car is out of control. Matt's dad is a good driver, but he can't stop the car. It's going too fast. It's too late. There's a tree. <laughs> A terrible sound of metal breaking. Now there's silence. The car is upside down. Only a wheel is moving. It turns and turns and turns. Matt put his head in his hands and cried, <laughs> like he did every night. It can't be true. <laughs> But it was true. His parents were dead, and Matt was alone now. Cry, Matt, cry. Don't worry," said a gentle voice. The sad, kind face of an old lady appeared in the light of the lamp next to Matt's bed. "I'm sorry, Gran," said Matt, and looked up. In the lamplight was the pale face of a desperately unhappy young boy. It was a nice face, but his blue eyes were still full of tears. I'm sorry," he repeated. "Gran, when will I start to forget?" "You'll never forget," said his grandmother. "But one night your nightmares will stop. Then you'll start to dream of the happy times with your mum and dad. Happy memories never die." Matt's grandmother smiled. She was a wise old woman and the ideal person to help Matt at this difficult time. Let's go into the kitchen for some hot milk. Matt got out of bed. He was quite tall for his age, and already looked down on his little grandmother. She was small, but she had a big heart. It was difficult for her too. Jane. Her daughter was dead, and Philip, Jane's husband, and Matt's father too. But now there was Matt to take care of. Matt was her world now. Will you like living here? She asked him, as they drank their milk. I don't know," answered Matt, tired and sad. "It's so different. I liked Newbridge very much. It was a nice city." Not too big, and the people in the north are kind and friendly. I had a lot of friends. Greenwood's okay, but it's a very quiet suburb, and it's difficult to get to the centre of London from here. I haven't got any friends here, except you, Gran. And there's no Newbridge United and no swimming club. Poor Matt. You'll see, things will change. There are a lot of football teams in London. There's a swimming pool near here, and of course you'll make friends. You'll see. But now, Matt, it's time to go back to bed. Tomorrow's a big day. Your first day at your new school. Chapter Two: A New School. Greenwood Middle School or Greenwood Prison? It was quarter to nine, and Matt was outside the school gate. The gate was closed, but through the iron bars he could see the school. It was a big, old, austere building made of grey stone. There were two floors, with windows with iron bars. On the ground floor, there were three entrances with doors made of wood. 
Over the central door was the school motto in big black letters. It was in Latin. Fugit etas, carpe diem. Read Matt. Time flies. Live for the day. Above the door on the left was the word boys, and over the door on the right the word girls. Matt smiled. That's stupid, thought Matt. Boys and girls have to go in different doors. Matt stopped smiling when he looked around. A lot of children were now outside the iron gate, all dressed identically. The school uniform. Now he remembered, at Greenwood School, uniform was obligatory. Matt, in his blue jeans, black trainers, and red Newbridge United football shirt, felt very out of place. All the other children were wearing their green wool blazers. The boys with black trousers and a white cotton shirt. The girls with dark skirts and white blouses. Then Matt noticed the green and gold school ties. They wear ties to school too. He thought. Oh no, this place is really behind the times. He felt hundreds of eyes on him. He wanted to go home, but it was too late. The gate was open. The bell rang, and the children started to go in, all talking and laughing. They were happy to see their friends again. Matt was very unhappy. He felt very lonely. Boy, Matt heard an angry adult voice. He looked round. Yes. You boy, where is your uniform? Matt saw a short, thin man with an angry red face. I'm sorry, sir. He said, "It's my first day." The man, obviously a teacher, looked at him carefully. From your clothes and your accent, you must be Johnson, the new boy from the north. Yes, sir. Matt, Matt Johnson replied. Matt Johnson at this school. The man continued. We use surnames here, and I'm Mr. Briggs. Did your parents forget your uniform? Matt was hurt, but replied, "My parents are dead, sir." Oh yes. Now I remember that accident. It was in the newspapers. Your father was that famous lawyer. Well, I hope you'll buy a uniform as soon as possible. And Mr. Briggs. Went away. Matt was devastated. He didn't have the right clothes or the right accent, and his dad, a hero for a lot of people, now seemed an inconvenience. He felt terrible. He wanted to go back to Newbridge. Be careful," said a girl's voice. Matt turned and saw a pretty blonde girl smiling at him. You can't go in here," she continued. "This is the girls' entrance. Mr. Briggs will shout at you again." "Thanks," said Matt. "Hey, what's your name?" The girl was already inside. Chapter three: A bully. After a disastrous first day at school, Matt was very unhappy. What's the problem? Asked his gran. Nobody talked to me. The teachers were horrible, and the lessons were boring. He answered. I'm going to watch TV. His gran smiled kindly and said. Things will change, Matt. That night, Matt didn't have his nightmare. He dreamt of the blonde girl. She was the only reason to go back to school. The next day. Matt went by bike to school. It was a sunny day, and the birds sang happily. He arrived early. Perhaps today will be better. He thought. He put his bike in the bicycle shed and walked towards the boys' entrance. Near the girls' entrance, he saw the blonde girl from yesterday, talking to a tall boy. That's Johnny Briggs, Mr. Briggs's son. Thought Matt. He's in my year. I saw him bully a first-year boy at lunchtime yesterday. Matt looked at the blonde girl. 
She had the same green eyes and pretty round face he remembered from his dream. He thought, She looks really nice, and she spoke to me yesterday. I'm going to say hello. As he came near, he saw the girl looking angrily at Briggs. He heard her saying, No, I don't want to watch your silly football match. Leave me alone. She went towards the entrance, but Briggs stopped her. Be stupid. You must come with me. It's an important match, and I'm the captain. And I want you there to support my team. He said, catching her arm. The girl pulled away. Don't touch me. I'm not interested in you or your stupid football match. She shouted. Her face was red, and she looked very annoyed. Briggs looked furious. It's not a stupid match, he said loudly. It's very important. We're playing at the local stadium. And he continued to hold the girl's arm. Matt saw this. He felt angry and decided to help the girl. He walked towards them and said quietly to Briggs, Leave her alone. Now. Briggs looked at him. He was surprised and released the girl's arm. She moved away and looked at Matt gratefully. Who are you? What do you want? Don't tell me what to do. Briggs shouted aggressively, but Matt wasn't frightened. He said calmly, Go away and don't annoy her again. She's not interested in you. Briggs moved towards Matt, but Matt was taller and he looked very determined. The bully stopped. You'll pay for this. I promise, he shouted threateningly. Matt didn't react. Briggs turned and looked at the girl. I won't forget, he said, and walked away. The girl looked at Matt and smiled warmly. Thank you for your help. He's a horrible pest, and he always annoys me. This time he was really angry, she said. Matt smiled too. No problem. Perhaps he will leave you alone now. I hope so. Thanks again. What's your name? She asked.